Hey everybody, welcome back to Holly Randall Unfiltered. I just want to give a quick shout out to my sponsors at Blue Chew. If you are struggling in the bedroom somewhat, you got to check out Blue Chew. They are discreet, they are online, and they are made in the USA. Go to bluechew.com and use code Holly to try it for free. Pay just $5 in shipping. All right, so my guest today is somebody who I just met um, at a penthouse shoot because she is the newest penthouse pet. Um, her name is Corey Yi, and she is a beautiful Chinese American model who has also been in Playboy um, and is currently gracing the cover of Maxim's New Zealand January issue as well. Let's give her a big welcome. Thank you so much for coming, Corey. Hey, Holly. Thank you for having me. Of I'm course. To be here. Um, so I just have to say, you know, I hadn't shot for Penthouse in like years. <laughs> so when I went to go shoot for them, it was really nice to like come back and, and be able to work with someone like you who was like a professional model and you were like so nice and smart and obviously business savvy. So I was like, hmm, she should come on my podcast and, yeah. you know, like <laughs> kind of show the world that you're more than just a pretty face. Yeah, thank you for having me. Um, I was amazing shooting with you. You were such a boss and so professional. And um, yeah, I'm excited to be here on your show. Thank you. So um, I always like to start at the beginning. How did you get into modeling and all the way up to nude modeling? <laughs> so I started modeling at the age of 15. And my first photo shoot that I ever did was for a plastic surgeon. And it was actually a Botox ad. And Wait, at 15? At 15. I'm sorry, maybe 16. I was a teenager, though. Still, though. Still, yeah. <laughs> That's kind and, of like false advertising. I know, right? <laughs> well, super false advertising at the time. Um, but I was living in New Mexico. And the doctor, um, you know, he, he asked me if I would do a Botox ad for them. And so I was like, sure, why not, you know? So the first ad I ever did, I was holding up a syringe. And it said, the logo was like, it said, what's the secret or what's her secret? And I'm holding up the syringe going, shh. <laughs> and I'm a teenager. The secret um, is that I'm 16 years yeah, old. The, the secret is youth. Um, but yeah, that was my first modeling gig. And I just like, I don't know. I just, ever since I was a teenager, I was always in love with the modeling industry. Mm -hmm. I would look at like, I mean, again, underage, but mm -hmm. I always knew I wanted to be a playmate. Mm -hmm. I would open up the magazines and I was like, oh my God, these girls are so beautiful. Like I just knew that was something I always wanted to do. And so after my photo shoot with the doctor, I was just always constantly pursuing modeling. Mm -hmm. um, but again, I was from a small town in New Mexico and we didn't have really any modeling out there. I mean, there yeah. was really nothing out there besides amazing Mexican food. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, when I was, um, I think I was like 19 when I left, um, I saved up like $3,000. I was working at a bar um, and I just, I knew that I wanted to leave. So I saved up like three grand. I packed up all my stuff and I was like, you know what? I'm just going to move to Las Vegas. Um, and yeah, so I, I packed up my stuff as a teenager. I moved out, uh, moved to Las Vegas with my little three grand. And um, and yeah, I just I didn't know anybody there. What made um, you pick Las Vegas? Because I feel like mm -hmm. usually if you're thinking about pursuing a modeling career, people's minds usually go to like New York or Los Angeles first, right? Right. So so for me, it was bottle service. So mm. the bottle service, because I knew that young girls could make a lot of money. Yeah, that's true. Um, and I was like, you know what? Like, I might as well, I want to try that. Um, but when I moved to Las Vegas, you know, I was still always interested in doing modeling. Um, I was able to meet some like modeling agencies. Um, I did a few runway shows out there. Um, so it was, I was doing bottle service at the time and I was doing some modeling. So I was doing like a bit of both. So it was just a great, great way for me to meet people and make money at the same time. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So what is it about modeling that you love so much? Like, how does it make you feel like, what is the, what is the draw for you? You know, so I just, I love being in front of the camera. I love it. Um, I just feel like it's very empowering. Um, I think the human body, like the human body, but especially a woman's body is just a magical work of art. Um, and I was an art major in school. Okay. So, so I just love art and I love feeling sexy and I love feeling confident. And I just love um, everything that goes into it from the hair, the makeup, the styling, the set, the people that you get to meet. 
um, I just love everything about it. Yeah. Um, but to me, it's all a work of art. You just put it all together and boom, you have this, and, well, usually amazing masterpiece that comes out. Yeah, you say usually. <laughs> I say usually. I don't want to say all the time. You but. say usually. Do you have any bad modeling experiences that either oh. ha- was like an uncomfortable experience or just like the pictures afterwards you were just so disappointed in? God, you know, absolutely. Like I have a ton. It's like hard to even pick one. Um, but you know what always blows my mind is when you have a beautiful model and you have all these amazing things that you put together and you still – like if you have a bad photographer for instance they still like make the model look bad in a photo mm-hmm. and it happens all the time mm-hmm. i'm just like like man how does that happen um excuse me <clears throat> but um yeah as far as bad modeling experiences go i've had a ton um the main thing is with men male photographers and i'm mm-hmm. sure you've had these experiences too where uh the male photographers uh they're just super creepy with the models mm-hmm. Um, especially younger models too, yeah. ones that are innocent, new to the game. Yeah, um, yeah that's uh, – I actually had – you know what's so funny is you <clears throat> reminded me of an experience that I had when I was 15 that I had forgotten about, and I thought about it the other day. I don't know why. So it was this guy named Rich, and he used to, like, hang out in Malibu all the time, which is where I grew up close to there. His so name was Rich? His name was Rich. Rich what? If you don't, are we allowed to say it on here? Rich Leon? Please don't tell me you know him. I don't know. No, no, no. The one I know is, okay, different one. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, he was terrible. And he was this creepy older guy. Uh-huh. And he came up to me and he was like, you're so beautiful. You could be in Seventeen Magazine. And I was like 14 and like fucking stupid. <laughs> um, and I was like, oh, really? <laughs> And I'd always actually wanted to be a model when I was younger, but my mother dissuaded me from it because she had been a model and then she was a photographer. And um, she just was like, I think first off, and I have to like give her credit for this as perhaps unkind as this may sound to some people, but like she knew that I didn't really have what it takes to be a model. Like, no, in all honesty, in all like loving honesty, like I wasn't very tall, like I was cute, but there wasn't anything like incredibly special about me. Like my hair was terrible. I didn't know like what to do with it. Um, well, you I had, got like, the hair on point now. <laughs> Thank you. It took yeah. me like 40 years to figure this out. Um, but yeah, so she always kind of dissuaded me from it. And she was like, you should be a photographer because her whole thing was like, you know, it's a lot more empowering. You mm-hmm. have control, like that kind of thing. But anyways, so yeah, this photographer, Rich, he um, said that he wanted to shoot me and he was going to submit me to the magazine and he shows me his portfolio and it's like all these young girls in bikinis. I mean, like there were so many fucking red flags and I just didn't like. I didn't get it. Yeah. I just didn't pick up on You're it. Like, oh man, he, think, he thinks I'm, he's saying I'm, I have a yeah. chance. So yeah. I know. There must right? be something. So... My mom is not excited about this idea at all. She does not like this man, but I'm like adamant. So she's like, okay, he can shoot you, but it has to be at the house. I need to be there. And I was like, I don't want you on set. You're going to like be annoying. She's like, fine. I won't like, and we had like a nice big backyard. She's like, all, I won't be there, but I'll be there you know well good thank so, god for your mother yeah so i was like <laughs> okay and so we're shooting and then yeah he he keeps trying to get a panty shot and I'm you were four- 14 i'm 14 Oof. wow panty shot is what he would say he keeps trying to get me like open my legs show him a panty shot then he tried to get me to take my clothes off and just wear a sheer dress over it and oh. and then he was telling me about like how he wanted to shoot me naked on a gravestone and I just remember being that is like so on so many levels, right? So many levels. That's so many levels. Weird. And it just got worse as like the day progressed and he started to invade my personal space and I just started to feel really, really uncomfortable. But of course I was too proud to like tell my mom to was like, she, so was she, she was not watching. What she was, was not on, on she was set just there. watching, but she was in the house. Okay. You know what I mean? But so you, like, yeah, then I get it. You, you're a teenager. So you're like, my mom isn't right. Like, I'm yeah. not going to tell her. Yeah. Exa- <laughs> well, and I think I was embarrassed too. Yeah. Cause she was, yeah, she was she right. Was like, and yeah. I like, didn't, you know, and I didn't know how to handle like how uncomfortable he made me feel. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, yeah, I just remember like that experience and then getting the photos back and they were so bad. So he was like, yeah. using like an on camera flash and like didn't color balance it. My face was all red. Yeah. I mean, the pictures were terrible. <laughs> and I just, and, and then, 
I had been interested in photography. I started getting into photography when I was 12. Sorry, I know I just completely No, I love it here. I love it. I'm like, tell me more. Me me. <laughs> tell me more, Holly. I'm really, I'm really good at that. Um, <laughs> we'll get back to Corey in a minute, guys. I promise. Enough about me. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, uh, and I was already dabbling in photography. You know, I'd started doing photography when I was 12, actually. Mm-hmm. And that experience actually honestly made me want to be a photographer more because I remember thinking like I didn't want other people to go through what I went through and that was actually a driving force behind why my mom became a photographer as a model because same thing Mm -hmm. as a model like you know men were creepy and Mm -hmm. tried to sleep with her my mom was a slut and she slept with lots of people but you know like she doesn't want to sleep with everybody (laughs) um and uh so yeah so that like really kind of solidified my decision to really be behind the camera and you know it's like funny because now here i am today shooting like nudes of women and like the one thing that makes me fucking crazy is hearing stories like that yeah so tell me tell me your stories oh god i have so many but first of all before i get into my stories i want to say thank you and like how amazing you were at the penthouse photo shoot Mm -hmm. and it was also like you know because i've I've shot plenty of nudes um i'm very selective with which Mm -hmm. photographers i'll shoot nude with but it was, you know, because I, I had never shot for Penthouse before. I'd never shot with you before. So when I showed up on set and I was like, oh, I have a female photographer. Mm-hmm. This is amazing. Mm-hmm. And you were so great, too, because you could tell, like, you just, you have this, like, women's intuition, too. Like, mm-hmm. you you pick up on things that men will never pick up on. Yeah. Which is, you know, you knew, like, moments where I was like, like, am I showing too much? Yeah. And you're like, you would stop. You're like, are you, are you comfortable with this, Corey? Or do you want to like move a different way? Yeah. You just knew everything that was going yeah. on in my head. So thank you. You're welcome. That also <laughs> you comes, made the experience amazing. That also comes from years of shooting for Playboy. Yeah. And it was like same kind of thing. Like mm-hmm. girls were kind of like, mm, I don't want to show this. And mm-hmm. I don't want to show that. And I do some of my own nude modeling just on my OnlyFans. And I am mm-hmm. like so annoying. Yeah. <laughs> you know, about like what I'll show and yeah. um very picky about who shoots me. There's literally mm-hmm. like only two people who can shoot me. Same. Yeah. And um <laughs> yeah, picky about makeup and everything. Yep. I'm just like Yep. So I get it. I <laughs> totally get it. But anyways, um what? but yeah, I guess one of my let me think. So probably one of my creepiest stories that I've had, um, it was when I first moved to LA and it was my first photo shoot in LA. And at the time I was transitioning from bottle service to being a full-blown model and influencer. So when I first moved out here, um, if I saw you had a large following like on Instagram, I didn't really know any better. I just thought, oh, this must be a legit photographer. This person must be really good because they have a high following. So this photographer contacted me and he's like, hey, I love your look. Um, I can get you on all these covers of these magazines. Um, You know, let's, let's set up a shoot. So, of course, I said, okay, um, you know, we were setting up a photo shoot on the beach somewhere in Santa Monica, so I thought, Mm -hmm. right? So he sends me a time, sends me an address, and I didn't even look up the address before I showed up. I just put it in my GPS, showed up on time. Well, when I show up to the location, it's this little janky, like, hotel, and I was right when I pulled into the parking lot, I was like, oh, man, this is like weird. Right. Mm -hmm. So then I I go I go to meet him and he's uh, showing me like the lobby and he goes, all right, so let me show you the room, like where I have everything set up. And I go, I thought you told me we were shooting on the beach. Like, what Mm -hmm. is this? So he goes, well, let me just show you. I thought we could get some lingerie pictures in the bedroom before we go to the beach. So I just I went up to the room with him. I didn't even go in. He just Mm -hmm. opened up the door. And I looked in and it's just like a white bed sheet, um, all like pretty much like a ring light, um, bottles of liquor on the cabinet. And I was That's just always like a fucking red flag. And it's like 11 o'clock in the morning, you know, yeah. and he's like offering me rum and tequila. And I'm like, I didn't even go in the room, though. I just told him, I go, look, I, I feel extremely uncomfortable. Um, you know, we agreed to shoot on the beach and this is not what I thought it was. And I told him I was going to leave. Like, I didn't even want to go in the room. And. He said, okay, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I didn't know. Uh, so, you know, he just packed up his stuff and we did like like maybe one look on the beach. Mm-hmm. But um, but yeah, I mean, that was probably my creepiest run-in. But after that day, I learned, okay, um, you have to do your research better with people. Mm-hmm. You can't just look at their following. Uh, you need to see which girls they've shot with, no girls in the industry, so that way, you know, you can ask girlfriends or mm-hmm. other girls like what their opinion is, what their experience was with that photographer. And, um, and yeah. 
um, that was probably my worst story. Not too bad, but I also know my limits and my boundaries, and I didn't let it escalate. Yeah, that's the thing. I mean, you didn't go in the room. You didn't take. Yeah, and I wasn't gonna like... let get naked or anything in front of some guy that I didn't know. Like, yeah, you know. on your own. Yeah, no. Yeah, especially alone. Yeah, that's a big thing. Yeah, I mean, that's a thing. Like when I used to try to scout <laughs> models, like specifically for a Playboy, um, I would always tell them like these are the girls I've shot, feel free to contact anyone mm -hmm. and ask them like what their experience was like working with me. Like yeah. <laughs> I have no problem with that because if you're confident that you're, you have good intentions mm -hmm. and that like, you know, you don't have these ulterior motives, then you're not going to have a problem if someone's like, can I get referrals? Like, you're, right. you know what I mean? Cause then you're like, of course, like, yeah, there's you know, no, like, there's no bad, uh, intention there's no there. weirdness about it. Yeah. You're just, you're genuine. You know, you, you're like, I just, I'm proud of my work. Here it is, you know? <laughs> yeah, because it's like, it's the guys who get weird about that, who are like, what do you mean? Like, you're questioning, you know, me mm -hmm. and my... That's automatic red flag. That's an automatic, automatic red flag when they get defensive. It's like, mm -hmm. well, then, you know, yeah. yeah. I'm sorry that happened <laughs> to you. Um, so were you, so you were doing like lingerie and bikini stuff. Mm -hmm. So when did you decide to start doing nudes? So that's... I started doing nudes maybe three years ago, mm -hmm. um, and I've been modeling for like 10 years. Mm -hmm. So I always knew like that, that I wanted to do Playboy. Mm -hmm. um, I always knew that I wanted to do that, but I, I was a little hesitant in the beginning because I wasn't sure, uh, you know, just I felt like it would put me into a different category of, mm -hmm. of modeling, and I wasn't sure like how people were going to view me after that. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to, I didn't want to like shame myself. Um, but when I first did it, that was about three years ago, and I was actually started on OnlyFans. Mm -hmm. I started topless, and then I started doing full nude, and then um, it feels like a safe place to start because it's behind yeah, a paywall. Yeah, you're talking to your fans too, and so it's, it's like your content. It's just, you own it. You control everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, that was that was how I started was on OnlyFans, and then after I was like, you know, topless, uh, topless, and doing nudes on OnlyFans, then I was like, you know what? Yeah, let's do Playboy. Let's mm -hmm. do another Playboy. Okay, let's do Penthouse. <laughs> <laughs> so what was your first, uh, like, professional nude shoot like? Um, it was good. So my first one was for Playboy Mexico. Mm -hmm. And um, it's interesting with Playboy Mexico because they don't necessarily set the shoot up for you. You just have to send them a really good submission. Mm -hmm. So so my shoot was great because I was working with a photographer that I had worked with, again, for years. Mm -hmm. I was I knew him very well. I was very comfortable with him. Um, and, yeah, he just – he he's actually kind of the one who convinced me to do it because this is, like, when OnlyFans first came out. And mm -hmm. um, he's like, Corey, you know, like, let's submit to Playboy. Like, you know, I think you have a great look. And again, I don't think he was being creepy or anything. He's yeah. just like, dude, like you're hot. Let's do this. So, and I'm sure if you knew him well, then he yeah. must have known that you always had aspirations to do Playboy, right? Yeah, yeah, he knew. So it it wasn't one of those creepy situations where this guy's like, I just want to see you naked. Like he yeah. had shot for Playboy many times. Um, and so yeah, it was almost like just two friends shooting together. We didn't know if uh, Playboy was going to accept it or not, um, but they did, and mm -hmm. yeah, it came out great. It was beautiful. <laughs> it's interesting how all of the different Playboy iterations work because mm -hmm. like playboy licenses its names out to it's like a franchise right uh -huh. and so there's like playboy mexico yep. there's playboy um czechoslovakia i mean I, I know a lot of these have died out so i don't even know what exists anymore and, yeah, and some of them are fake <laughs> yeah <laughs> so that's another thing you have to be careful well for. so interesting that you say that and i want to hear more about that but i know that there are some specifically there was a couple out of Europe and I can't remember exactly which ones they were and I don't want to like name the wrong one where you have to pay them mm -hmm. to have them run your set. Right, right. Right. And that's like which that's like crazy. a big one. Which is crazy too because I feel like most of these these are mostly the Playboys based out of Europe. Mm -hmm. Most of them do that. Mm -hmm. And then it's funny too because like, you know, I feel like a big part of like being in the magazine and everything is being able to find your prints. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, for instance, Penthouse, I'm sure that there's prints and everything like mm -hmm. out here in the stands. But they don't do that. They just sell like maybe online on Magster. Oh, sorry. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it's it's interesting. So it's not it's like a digital only a digital form. A digital form. Yeah. Yeah. If there's even a magazine set in there, who knows? Like yeah. if they even have like um, sponsors or brand deals or if there's anything in there besides your photos. Yeah, I know. It's it's 
it's it's hard too though right because it's like the magazine industry has died and i grew up shooting for magazines like that's what i used to do so i've watched the whole thing collapse and isn't um, it sad it is sad it's sad and it takes the excitement away too, yeah it's so different now yeah it is because i mean playboy doesn't put out a magazine anymore like playboy yeah, playboy i know um and actually it was interesting i had a meeting with moose from penthouse yesterday about something else uh-huh and he brought one of the penthouse magazines, not yours, because yours isn't in print yet. But um, they, you know, they don't do ads on theirs. There's no ads on uh, Playboy. No, for penthouse. Oh, okay. Their That's magazines have no ads. Huh. That's so I haven't, I haven't actually seen one. They're really nice. Recently, I think you're gonna be really happy when you get yours. Yeah, I haven't they're, even seen the cover yet. I haven't yeah. seen the photos. Yeah. I saw like maybe three shots. So. Yeah, no, they look good. Yeah. Um, Yay. But the, the paper is really nice, <laughs> mm-hmm. too. So, like, it's just, like... Good quality. It's a good quality. And they sell them, in like, in Barnes & Nobles and at the airport and stuff oh, like nice. that. So you can Yay. find them, like... They're one of the only... That and then Hustler, I think, is the only other magazine that that's still out. does it. And I don't yeah. think that they sell in stores anymore. They might be sub, um, subscription only. So, like, well, you got in, yeah. like, one of the last magazines. And who knows how much longer that's going to last for, too. I, I feel like it's dying out like Blockbuster, you know, yeah. or something. It so is. It really is. It really is. So um, what was your, when was there, was there, when was the moment that you felt like, okay, I've arrived, like I've, this is like, I've achieved, maybe not, I don't want to say like achieved your goals, because I feel like we always have more and more and more mm-hmm. goals, like it's never, but like where you're like, okay, I've, I've kind of made it, like. I'm happy with where my career is going. Like, this is where I wanted to be. I, that's a good question. Because um, I never really, feel, like, even to this day, I never really feel like I've made it. Mm-hmm. Um, just because, I, like, again, I always have more and more goals that I'm yeah. working towards. Um, I will say, like, there there was a point where it was when I made a certain amount of money one year. And then mm-hmm. I was like, oh, wow. Like, I think I'm doing pretty well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, um, <coughs> excuse me. Now, you have a very popular Instagram following um what you it's like it's over a million what's your like like 2.2 2.2 i used to have 3 million because i had a second account that Mm -hmm. had a million and it's currently down but i'm gonna get it back (laughs) do they just take it down because your stuff's like how instagram just does that they're just crazy it's so crazy that's a whole nother story but um but yeah so what do you say to people who diminish the idea of like instagram models and say it's like not a real job i would say they're that they're just hating. Um, I don't even know. I'm like, you guys are haters. Sorry, but it is it is a career. It is a full time job. I mean, um, you know, I I think a lot of people just see the beauty of what's put into Instagram. Like all like everything that's put onto Instagram is not like the reality stuff, right? Mm-hmm. Everything's produced. It's like the best image, the most perfect image you can possibly get out of a set. And so they don't see like what it takes to get these photos, um, all of the hard work and everything put into it. And it's not, and it's something that you know you're constantly doing, right? Mm-hmm. It's like something you do almost every single day. Yeah. Uh, so I feel like for them to, for people to be like, oh, Instagram model is not a real job. No, it really is. Um, you know, because there's a lot of hard work put into it. Um, you know, I didn't become Instagram famous overnight. It's something that I had to work towards uh, mm-hmm. for years to get to where I'm at, and I, and I'm still always working towards, you know, higher following, reaching a new audience, collaborating with new people. Uh, working with different brand deals like there's just so much that goes into it so yeah what would you say to someone who was maybe trying to level up their instagram game do you have any like tips or tricks for people um well if you're trying to level up your instagram game i would just say um find your niche like uh whatever brand you want to do like if it's lifestyle or something sexy just find your niche and then constantly collaborate your ass off Mm. (laughs) Um, you know, you might have to pay for a few photo shoots in the beginning, but I would say just being consistent um, and again, collaborating, working your ass off. Yeah. Uh, hard work will always pay off in the end. Yeah. I will say like collaborations are a big thing. We do a lot of like collaborations on our reels for the podcast. It was yeah. once I started the podcast and started using the Instagram reels function. That's, is that when it grew? And doing collabs, it, that's when it shot up. Yeah. Like, it's crazy, right? It's, it's yeah. crazy. And and Masha runs my Instagram account and she's very like in the numbers and she's yeah. like, okay, this does well. And then Instagram flags this. And then you got to like delete this picture or only use this picture. Mm-hmm. Like, cause there's, and there's this whole section that um, a lot of people don't know about that 
they Instagram won't recommend your profile to other people if mm-hmm. you have pictures that are flagged and that doesn't mean mm-hmm. that they're going to take them down they just like flag it, it. won't monetize yeah and and they won't oh, recommend God. it to other people so i got a i actually have a really terrible but funny story i can kind of laugh about it now this happened to me two days ago um so i'm in the sauna at the spa right and i like to send my fans little hello videos all the time when i'm mm-hmm. naked but Instagram has like the best filters on. It does. And so it does. So I'm I'm doing. But like they only a, let you do ninety seconds. Exactly. But I know. So so what I was doing is I had no makeup and I'm in the sauna and I'm doing like a little naked hello video for one of my fans on Instagram, just to use the filter. <sighs> well, I I accidentally you. posted a naked story on my Instagram and I have no idea how long it was up for, but it got taken down. And then I got this scare message from Instagram yeah. saying, like, you know, we, we removed your story for sexual content, yeah. nudity, your account could get taken down, you're unable to monetize. And I was like, fuck, my page was doing so well. Yeah. So, yeah, I posted a nude on accident. Whoops. I mean, there were a <laughs> lot of people that weren't sad about that. Yeah, well, uh, hopefully too many, hopefully not too many people saw it, but, uh, but yeah. <laughs> God, I... I, you know, that's like my greatest fear because I've totally done the exact same yeah. thing. Start using Snapchat, if anything, for the good filters. Like, yeah, but Instagram has, they have one that's really Snapchat's good. a little much. It's aggressive, Like right? a lot of their filters are too much. And Instagram has this one, it's like one of the first ones. It's just like, it's just enough. It's just you soft, know I mean? It's you just know? soft, but yeah. it's not too much. It doesn't make you look like a It doesn't make, I hate the ones on Snapchat that make your nose look smaller. Oh, God. Like, Those are the ones that make people get plastic surgery. Yeah, like, you know? I don't want And the wanna, lips bigger and everything. I don't want to change how my face looks. I You're just, just want to, like, smooth it out I just don't want to put makeup on. Yeah, exactly. You know? Yeah. Well, very, yeah. very annoying. Um, so, I've actually, so I, you know, follow you on Instagram, and I noticed that you do these interesting little videos that I don't, I haven't really seen on other people's <laughs> profiles. It's just like you in a sexy outfit, just like going about your day to day thing, like grocery going shopping, grocery shopping. Going to Target. So yeah. I feel like <laughs> you're definitely harnessing the, harnessing this kind of reality, you know, yeah. um, genre. When did how did you come up with that? So I actually I think I started doing that maybe two months ago, um, and it kind of happened on accident. So. So my photographer and I, we're just, we've been shooting just more lifestyle stuff and, you know, just day-to-day stuff. But we just so happened to capture this guy gawking at me in the background. And when I posted it, um, I think we got like 43 million views. Wow. It went super viral. Um, so I was like, I was like, wait a minute, I think we might be onto something. So we just kept doing it over and over again. And every time I do one of those videos, it's getting like millions of views. Yeah. Um, and I think it's for, you know, multiple reasons because it's like, okay, you know, everybody's used to seeing an Instagram model, mm-hmm. but like, you know, it, it's nice to see like, okay, this is how they are in real life. Like, do they actually look like this in real life? Uh, you know, how would you approach someone if you met like a model? So I feel like it raises all these questions in like the fans' brains, like, uh, you know, how you are in reality. So yeah. it's more relatable too. Totally. And it makes you feel accessible. You're yeah, like, oh, accessible. Yeah. I could see that girl You're at the like, grocery store. I could store. ask her for her number. <laughs> I, yeah, I could see that girl at the grocery store. I could ask her for her number, and she could turn around and tell me to go fuck myself. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure yeah. you wouldn't do that. Or be really I would. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> Holly. <Ma. laughs> Actually, today yeah. I was laughing. I was crossing the street today, and some guy like pulled over in his car and like asked me for my number. Oh, and part did of you me say, did you say fuck off? Yes, <laughs> but I was also like, oh, okay, like I I haven't had that happen to me like in years. It's that booty, you like, know? I know. I know. Holly right? Randall's got a booty. Mm-hmm. It's mm-hmm. nice. <laughs> Paying off. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you, Doctor Cohen. <laughs> but yeah, it was funny because I, I, like, part of me was like, ah, and part of me was like, I still got it, but still, fuck off. I love it. You're just like, fuck off. If that was me, I would have been like, thank you, bye. Like, I'm all nice. <laughs> fuck well, you. Once he, like, once he like asked me for like, it's one thing to be like, oh, you're so beautiful. I would have been like, thank you. But then uh-huh. when he was like, let me get your number. Let me get like, your come number. on, come over here. Then I was like, no. Dude, yeah. No. Come on, get out of here. Like, has that ever worked for you? You know what I mean? They're like too thirsty. Like, I just want to go up to him and be like, has that ever worked for you? Like, have you ever cat, cat called a girl yeah. and said, hey, baby, give me your number. And she's walked up to your car and like given you her number. Yeah. Has that like, how's that working for you? You know what amazes me is how many guys do that because they obviously think it works. And I wonder how many women do you harass on a day to day basis and how many women actually respond? 
I know. Because they do it. You know? I, you know, I think it's I think it's less about them wanting, like thinking that they're going to get a response. And I think it's more about getting a reaction. And Maybe. I think, I, and I think I it has know. to do more with like power and like trying to make you feel like uncomfortable maybe you know what i mean like that's, i don't that's pretty sick to think of it like that but, i know but i but i, I, I think of it I in like it a more sense. sinister yeah. way because it's like yeah it's a very aggressive i don't know it is though it makes sense yeah because they know they know they're making you feel uncomfortable you totally know? yeah because like, there's literally like no woman who's like oh yeah like <laughs> Yes, yeah, yes, let me give you my right. number. It's like, okay, you know when a guy sends a dick pic, like yes. like just randomly on Facebook or Instagram mm-hmm. or whatever, I'm like, how like how many women actually respond to those? Mm-hmm. Like I know. I feel like it's like the same type of scenario, yeah. like cat calling and dick pics. I'm like, what what is going on in your head here? Do you know I forget what it's called, there's a name for it, <laughs> but it's when guys um take photos of themselves like naked but you can't tell at first glance like they're naked in the reflection of like a tea kettle or something like that so you get this picture and you think it's like just a tea kettle I have but he's like nude this. in the, there's a there's a name for it hmm. and it's like a whole and i think also people will like upload these photos to i don't know like ebay or something like tea kettle for sale but like a there's nude? a reflection of it but yeah and it's like That's but you don't see it really unless you look there's actually a name for it. I can't remember what it's called, it's but it's like a whole of, it's thing. It's actually a clever thing. I might, I might start selling some tea kettles. <laughs> <laughs> Gonna be very shiny, highly polished. Yep. So <laughs> speaking of dicks, we do have to take a commercial break, but we're gonna come back and we're gonna talk about what uh, Corey thinks about penises. Um, apparently, she has a PDF of penises, which uh, <laughs> she mentioned briefly before the show. We didn't get into details, so I can't wait to hear what that's about. So stick around, guys. We'll be right back. Hey there, guys. Let's talk about something that we all face sometimes, those moments when things just don't go as planned in the bedroom. And it's not just about chronic issues. There are times for almost every guy where the little guy just doesn't want to get out of bed. Life stressors, be it work, personal life, or just a bad day, all of that can affect your performance when you least expect it. This is where Blue Chew steps in. Blue Chew is here for every guy who needs a little extra confidence every once in a while. With chewable tablets that are both convenient and fast acting, Blue Chew helps you be ready whenever the moment is right. It's prescribed online and delivered right to your door in discreet packaging. So there's no awkward doctor's visits, no waiting in line at the pharmacy. So whether you're dealing with occasional hiccups or just want to ensure you're at your best, Blue Chew gives you that extra boost. It's about having better sex, enjoying those intimate moments to the fullest, and leaving stress at the bedroom door. If you're ready to give it a try, you can do it so for free. Visit BlueChew.com and use our promo code HOLLY at checkout. Just pay $5 in shipping. That's BlueChew.com promo code HOLLY to receive your first month for free. Visit BlueChew.com for more details and important safety information, and we thank BlueChew for sponsoring the podcast. All right, we are back. So, Corey, um, let's talk about penises, everybody's favorite topic. (laughs) Uh, What is your ideal penis size? Okay, so my ideal penis size is about one inch above average. (laughs) You were going to say one inch, and I was like, wow. Yeah, I like (laughs) micros. One inch above average. So many guys just got really excited. (laughs) They're like, fuck yeah, she likes small dicks. (laughs) Micro penises, woo. Uh, No, so like an average size penis is about like five inches or so, right? Five and a half. Yeah, five, five five and a half. half. Yeah, it's on on my PDF. (laughs) (laughs) But yeah, I like like about one inch above average because... Yeah, I feel like it, that's that's for like long term dick, mm-hmm. right? But then if the you have like dick. the boyfriend dick, yeah. But if you're having like a one night stand or something like that, then you know I could do like like an eight inch mm-hmm. eight inch cock for a night or two, mm-hmm. you know. But but not long term. But not long term. Yeah. So the, the no go area for me is is the the sorry guys, uh, small penis zone. I can't I can't do it. Can't do the small penis. I can't do it. Mm. Especially the the skinny ones. Mm-hmm. For me, it's just not. Uh, have you ever been with a guy and and that showed itself and you were like like how just do you left. Get, yeah like how yeah. do you get out of like what do you do so i just i've never been with a guy like with a small penis or just a dick that i didn't like in general oh, okay but um yeah there was this one time this was a long time ago man i went on a date 
and I was really into the guy. We had mad chemistry. He was hot. Uh, we went back to my place and we started fooling around. Well, he pulls his penis out and it was really small. So I I told him, um, I was like, listen, like, I think you're really nice and I'm really into you. Oh, no. But I just oh, said no. I wanted to take things slow. Oh, no. When the sentence starts with, I think you're really nice, you're in trouble. Yeah, yeah. It's like going you're in anywhere. trouble. And I was like, I just, I was like, I just want to take things slow. Like, I'm not ready yet. And then, um, yeah, and then I never called him after oh, that. No. <laughs> but I couldn't do it. I was like, it's too too small like yeah. what am i gonna do with it i mean at least you know you're honest yeah about it you yeah know? i mean, it's, <laughs> I mean it, to, to me it's like what are you gonna sleep with that person and then what have to fake an orgasm or mm -hmm. or not i mean i don't know i just yeah or just like not do. be satisfied i mean yeah look i guess it's like Otherwise, you're just friends, right? If that sexual yep. chemistry and attraction isn't there, then you're just friends. Yeah. Then so, and if in like, the friend zone. yeah, and if mm -hmm. like, a, you know, and I, you know, a six inch penis is not like a huge ask, I don't think. I don't think like so. a lot I of guys, think... I think, fall into that category. I think you know? so. I, you know, I haven't looked at my. I should have looked at my PDF before okay, yeah. I got here. So I literally have. This I have PDF. all of the the dictistics on the pdf like everything from length width girth stamina pumps per minute uh which cock is like which country has the biggest cock in the world which is brazil um i should have looked at it though to refresh my memory on okay. this because i have all the facts on dicks okay. i could send it to you actually yeah. so yeah. what what was this where was this dick pdf <laughs> born out of like it just seems like a very random thing to have uh, clearly like it has some purpose yeah so this is actually really fun. It's probably going to sound weird. My mom actually helped me come up with this because she was like, Corey, we need to get you started on YouTube. Um, she goes, I really think that you should just bring in guys and interview them and talk about dicks and what they think their dick is like and then just start throwing like mad dick statistics at them. She goes, I can write you a PDF, um, you know, and I was, like, I was like, mom, I was like, wow, this is a great idea. Um, and we actually, we filmed one episode, but I don't know. We just never like, maybe I should go. What do you guys think? Should I start my YouTube channel about dictistics? I don't know. Um, I'm yeah, telling we you, just it's never... a very popular topic on YouTube. <laughs> yeah, we just never like, I don't know. We filmed one episode and I wasn't too happy with it. So I just didn't keep going with it. But mm -hmm. yeah, I had all, she created all these PDFs for me. So there was one on um, dicks. There was one on monogamy, polygamy. BDSM, all kinds of things that people are uncomfortable, most people are uncomfortable about talking about. But mm -hmm. but yeah, we wanted to talk about it. So. Wow. Yeah, thanks, mom. Okay. Yeah, tell me more <laughs> about your mom. Like, your mom sounds <laughs> rad. Your mom sounds like my mom. Just like yours, right? Yeah, but yeah. my mom's not organized enough. Like, she's never going to make me a PDF. She doesn't even know what a fucking PDF is. Like, <laughs> so she... my mom was a teacher. So that's why she's so, so organized and everything. Like, she she helps me with my, my interviews. She helps me... Um, she helps me with my social media. She helps. She helps me with everything. Wow. She's like like a momager, you know. Wow. Like when I when I did Playboy and I started doing OnlyFans, she's like, okay, sweetie, you know, whatever makes you happy. She's and now she's like, yeah, my my daughter's in penthouse, and my mom knows who you are and who your mom oh, wow. is. And she was actually super excited for me coming in today. She was like, oh my god, I didn't know that you shot with Holly Randall for penthouse. She's like huge deal congratulations oh my god thanks yeah. mom <laughs> so mom you're like, oh. so cool <laughs> yeah that's great i yeah. mean so many people don't have those stories when they tell their mom like what they do yeah so it's a huge support system which yeah it's incredibly important she doesn't look down on anything that i do she's always been supportive that's and, great so yeah. you were never like nervous to tell her about what you were no, doing no no never she knew that i always wanted to do playboy too like i would tell her that i was getting fake boobs when i was like 13 mm -hmm. like something ridiculous she's like so she knew yeah but yeah she's always been supportive that's great what about your dad my dad's been supportive. Like he knows, he knows that I've done, you know, all these different magazine stuff. He knows I have an OnlyFans. Um, it's just with my dad, it's more of like I don't really. He doesn't like look at my content or anything. Yeah. You know, he's like, he's like, you know, he goes, Corey, I'm proud of you. Like, again, he supports me. He's just like, 
Like, I don't want to see, you know. Yeah. He's like, I'm not going to go buy the penthouse magazine and look at it. You know, he's yeah. just like, congratulations, Corey. <laughs> yeah. And that feels like in a very, like, appropriate dad reaction right. to have. Right. Like, the father who, like, can't wait to see your nude layout. That's that's, that's, that would that's be, a little too supportive. It's a little yeah, weird. Talk about daddy issues. But, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's really amazing. I love that. So what do you think your key has been to becoming successful? Um. I would just say being driven and passionate um, and constantly looking for the next, like constantly having goals, Mm -hmm. uh, not getting too comfortable. Mm -hmm. Um, I think like the main thing is not getting too comfortable because when I get comfortable, then I'm like, oh shit, like what's the next move? Yeah. But do you feel like sometimes, because I know for me, sometimes I feel like that's a double-edged sword, you know, like I always have this ambition and this drive to Uh do the next thing, which is great and always like, you know, keeps us sort of ahead of the game or whatever but then there's also like that other side which is like you're never like satisfied and it's like a double-edged sword yeah it's like why are we doing all of these things like does it actually make us happy Mm -hmm. like what actually makes us happy like you know what i mean yeah i know exactly what you mean absolutely existential crises yeah yeah but then it's it like you said literally double-edged sword because it's like okay if I wasn't like that then I wouldn't be where I'm at mm-hmm. and then I wouldn't be like constantly thinking of new things but then again it's like okay sometimes you have to sit back and just appreciate what you have yeah yeah so, yeah no absolutely <laughs> you, gotta, you have to take time to just chill yeah I mean sometimes I really am envious of the people who have like the nine to five that just like leave their job at the job yep. they don't bring it home yep. like they do their job they go home at five and then like they do and they the things and they just the clock back in the next day and they're like cool with that and they don't mm-hmm. you know need to be like the most successful person at whatever and yeah they don't need to you know make the most money they just like their priorities are, are different and yeah. sometimes i'm like are, those, are they happier than me i don't know <laughs> <laughs> i wonder that too though yeah i wonder that every day yeah i think that's like the curse of any like career oriented person Mm -hmm. you know definitely so you have mentioned that you had some bad experiences with agencies when you were first starting out right Mm -hmm. can you tell us about that yeah um gosh i've had a few bad experiences with agencies mostly like social media agencies Mm -hmm. and where they're they're managing managing your social media accounts Mm -hmm. and then they just have like they just they overpromise and underdeliver, and they just kind of like run your accounts into the ground. But yeah, I just I had bad experiences with that, and then um, also just gosh, there's so much that goes into it. I don't really know um, how to put it in a, in a ball. But yeah, I would say just kind of overpromising and underdelivering, kind of running your social media accounts into the ground when they say they're gonna you know take you to the next level, and then also feeling like you know being in the agencies is a constant popularity contest. Mm-hmm. I hate that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, it's like always wanting to hang out with the cool kids and like who's, who, again, this constant chase of who's doing the best and, you know, like who's making the most money, who has the next nice car. And yeah. it's, it's draining, you know. So, yeah. Um, so, yeah, I've had a few bad experiences with agencies. But when that happened, um, I decided, you know, that I didn't need an agency anymore. Um, I was like, I've been in this industry for a very long time. I know a ton of people. I can just manage myself. Um, I can get my own publications, my own brand deals. I can do everything on my own. So there's really no need for an agency. Mm -hmm. Um, Now I have my own. I was just going to (laughs) say, and then (laughs) you pivoted into starting your own. So can you tell us about that? Yeah. So it happened because of my own bad experiences that I had with the agencies. Um, So I started doing my own thing. I had my own team helping me out with like my social media accounts, um, helping me get brand deals and just all these different things. Um, and then I had a couple girlfriends ask me, they were like, they were like, you're doing really well. Like, do you think your team could help me out? And I was like, sure, like, absolutely. So it started out as like a friend to friend thing. And then it just slowly started growing because a lot of girls were unhappy with their agencies and they were, you know, coming like, you know, the agency, not the agency. The industry is very small, Mm -hmm. so people like to talk. So, you know, the girls Mm -hmm. start talking. They're like, oh, you know, Corey's doing her thing. Like, we're we're like a sisterhood, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, And, yeah, it just started growing. And and we're still a small team, but it's great. It's quality. It's like a sisterhood. And, yeah, yeah, we just build each other up. And there's no competition. And and it's it's just, yeah, it's good. How do you think that you do things differently than the other agencies that you'd worked with before? Um, We're just very personal and hands-on. 
right? Like I, I, um, I manage a very small group of girls. And so I focus in on them. Like, I feel like I, tr- and also I'm friends with these girls. So mm-hmm. I know like what their needs are. Um, I know what their brand is. I'm not looking at just numbers and, uh, you know, like their social media accounts. So I feel like I know like where to place these girls, who to put them with when it comes to like collaborations and photo shoots. Um, I just know them on a personal level. So yeah. for me, it's a little different. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm digging in a little deeper than, you know, I feel like most agencies could. <laughs> <laughs> so you talk about like, you know them and you know what their needs are. Are Do you feel like you create an online persona or do you think that you feel comfortably being authentically you online? Like, what's the difference between the Corey Yee at home in her sweats <laughs> and like the Corey Yee, like shopping at the grocery store in a mini skirt? Oh, man. You know, I'm like, I'm like, what do you like the the. I have so many different masks that I put on. Depends on which platform, <laughs> you know. Like, like on Instagram, it's like, oh, hot model in the grocery store. That's mm-hmm. that's kind of where I'm at now. Um, but you know, on OnlyFans, for instance, I'm very personal with my fan, my fans. Um, I feel like if you want to get to know like the authentic me, that's where you can go to like really get to know me. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, like like for instance, I'm a huge nerd. I love anime. I like video games, stuff like that. So you know, you'll never see me talk about that on places like Instagram or Twitter. But on my OnlyFans, it's different. Oh, interesting. Um, yeah. And then yeah. Um, what do you do on your OnlyFans? Like, what do you <laughs> – what, 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 if someone wanted to join your OnlyFans, yeah. what would they find? I mean, I do I do nudes, like Playboy, penthouse-style nudes, lost mm-hmm. strip teasing. Uh, my main thing is I'm, like, your best friend on there. I'm, I'm like, a girlfriend. <laughs> mm-hmm. So, yeah, again, like, I, I, don't, I don't go out. Um, I don't really do much. So I'm just on my phone all day, on my laptop. I like to shoot, and I like to – just create and get to know my fans and I like to make money so yeah that's yeah, yeah that's what I'm, I'm just on there I'll be your best friend all day Let's now, chat. do you ever have to deal with uh, fans who like cross boundaries you know because it's like we, we like to and you know I have the same thing like I like to get to know my fans and talk to them about their mm-hmm. personal life but I have found that there have been instances sometimes where it gets like to a Too point much. yeah where I'm yeah. like oh wait a minute like yeah. this is not that thing yeah definitely um and that's that's like a, a scary point too like especially if you get the psycho fan because mm-hmm. they are out there mm-hmm. um but yeah I mean just knowing your your boundaries is is big um I, I just shut people down immediately if they're being yeah. rude I'm like fuck you I don't need to deal with this yeah you know? um it, just like I would if I was in a relationship <laughs> yeah <laughs> you know yeah I feel like that's almost how you have to treat it is if you're in a relationship you just shut them down the minute they start acting like an idiot um yeah yeah how, um, you know, setting boundaries is something that's a big struggle for a lot of people, especially, you know, I've inter- we talked earlier about like young girls in the industry, like not really knowing what they were getting into and that mm-hmm. kind of thing, um, not understanding how to set boundaries and that getting them into trouble. Have you always been comfortable setting boundaries or is that something that you've learned as you've um, grown? Um- I would say I've I've always been pretty good with setting my boundaries. Obviously, as I've gotten older, like there's like no tolerance now mm-hmm. <laughs> anymore. It's like a, maybe, I mean I, I still had yeah I've I've always definitely set boundaries, but but now that I'm older, I'm like zero tolerance for bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> now I'm like I, my eyes will just cut you. <laughs> <laughs> the eyes alone. <laughs> There is a lot of power to saying no, and it's something mm-hmm. that I've discovered. Yeah, I got this one right over. here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, you do? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Wait, do, is there a finger that says yes? No, because you never tell people <laughs> yes. It's it's always no. <laughs> you don't want to wow. start telling people yes. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So wait, do but you... if you flip it this way, then it's on. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, no, okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. Wait, what what inspired you to get that tattoo? I was I was like 18 and drunk in Santa Monica. I just yeah, it's not a cool story. I should make up a cool story. No, I just I got it's actually one of my girlfriends and I, we both got drunk one day. And we we're just like let's go get a tattoo, and so Such we just we idea. both got we the word no. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you're a teenager. You're supposed to do stupid stuff. Yeah, but I actually really like this mistake right here. Yeah, yeah, it was fun. I mean, it's it's not I. 
it's funny. Yeah, I it's spent not really like noticeable, I know? spent like eight hours shooting you, and I never noticed that. <laughs> it, like you just point, and I was like, oh, I've never seen that before. So, and, and especially you, as much as you were telling me to fix my hands the whole time. <laughs> I'm really annoying about hands. Yeah, which is great though, because like that just shows how good of a photographer you are. Thank Attention you. to detail. Yeah. Well, once you start to notice like weird hands looking, once you start to notice hands, yeah, and when hands look weird, you can't unsee it. Yeah. Like I, it's like it's like not pointing the toes. Oh you my know? god! Don't get me started, girl. T Rex feet. Fuck, dude. It makes me <laughs> fucking crazy. Like people who, like everybody knows, I'm like so into pointing the toes. Pointing the toes. Yeah. Pointing the toes. Yeah. You just like you flip the hands out. Yes, flip. this not way, it. this way, like revving a motorcycle. Oh, see, I'm still doing it. Because if you do it like this, I thought then... you were, I thought you were, wait, like like, like this. this. So yeah, if you do it like this. So first of all, do you want a photography lesson? We're gonna get a little little modeling lesson, friends. <laughs> So your hands are as big as your face, right? So you generally want to minimize them somewhat so they don't like distract from the rest of you. And so you, when you're showing your hands, you usually, you don't want to show the back. You don't want to show the palm. You want to show like the side, like usually where the pinky fingers are because then it thins it out, right? So it's like mm-hmm. the least amount of hand. So it's just like more elegant. And then also <laughs> when you do this and you flip these wrists out, right? So now we're seeing like the the smaller part of my hand, but it also like forces you to bring your shoulders down and bring your elbows out. Cause otherwise like people, a lot of people do like this, you know, and the (laughs) T-Rex hands and it brings your shoulders up, which, you know, I mean, look, I know that's a look and some people love that shit. Like that's fine. But for me, old school, I just prefer the other way. And then also, um, like you want to bring your elbows out from your body because you want to create that space between your arms and your body, right? So like people can see the shape of your curves. Like the one thing you want to be careful about when you're modeling is to never block your curves. Right. Like don't block like the curve in your back, your stomach. So the arm placement is important. So you don't want to be like this, like a like a stick. You want to be like this. So anyways, there you go. There's your little so photography lesson. <laughs> I learned a lot from that shoot. <laughs> Thank you. It's funny actually, like I'll talk to girls who you know, have been modeling forever and like, it'll surprise me. I think Abigail Mack said to me once that like, I was the one who like taught her how to like do her hands or something. And I was just like, what? She's like, like, I always, she's like, I learned that from you. And it's just so weird to think like, wow, like (laughs) I had that impact on somebody and someone who's so successful in the industry. I'm like, oh, okay. Nice. That feels good. I know my shit. (laughs) (laughs) Um, so what would people be surprised to learn about you? Um, well, I'm a huge nerd. I'm super introverted too. I don't really go out much. Um, and, and I love to paint. I'm an artist. That's really so, cool. Watercolors yeah. or acrylics? Uh, oils and acrylics. Um, then I do ceramics too. Oh, that's but, great. Yeah. I, I like to sculpt things with my hands. Oh, <laughs> sculpt the perfect penis? Yep. The perfect penis. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I always, actually, I became a photographer because I wanted to be an artist, but I wasn't good at it. But you are it's still though. I feel yeah. like anybody who's a photographer, that is art. True. So if it was a, the best ones are. It was a way for me to create art without having to put pen to paper because I just like wasn't a very good like artist like, oh, with, with the, my hand. With the hands, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and I did. I like always wanted to be able to. I am. I am old enough that I watched Bob Ross on TV and tried to paint happy little trees. And I, I, I love Bob Ross. I learned how to paint so many things from him. See, I fucking I watched his him. show and I could not, like he makes it look so easy and my yeah. shit looked nothing like his. <laughs> like that, and I think that that was the whole joke about Bob Ross is that like he made it look so easy. He's like, yeah, you just put here, you have your little tree and your little yeah. lights and your sun. And then most people are like, and then you try to do it, you mimic it, and it looks nothing <laughs> like it. And it's, like, very disappointing. <laughs> but you were able to, like, actually learn from Bob Ross. And yeah, your I stuff did. looked like his. I was like obsessed his. with him. Like, like, there's – and I'll do – I'll watch Bob Ross to this day. Like, sometimes I'll just get a canvas out, and I'll just put on one of his YouTube channels, and I'll just start going to town painting Bob Ross. Like, oh God, that's so cool. yeah, oh. I'm a nerd. <laughs> what, what do you like to paint? I like to paint landscapes and then like abstracts, kind of like pop art. Like uh, I love painting Marilyn Monroe. Oh. Huge, yeah. Do you do anything with your paintings? Do you like ever sell them or well, like I used to them sell anymore? them actually. Uh, so when I was, this was a while back, but uh, before before I was modeling, um, I took a little break from doing bottle service, and I was just painting, and I was going to art school. And I actually moved to Santa Fe for about a month because they have a huge art district yeah. there. It's amazing. 
Um, and I thought about just moving out there to be a painter uh, for a while. And then I moved there for a month and I was like, oh, I'm kind of bored. Yeah. <laughs> I miss the city. So yeah, yeah. I, went, I went back to the city. But it sounds but, yeah. like Santa Fe looks beautiful. I've never been there. But... It's beautiful. I'm like, maybe when I'm in my 60s, I'm like, okay, I could be there just, just yeah. sitting there watching Bob Ross and painting. But, yeah. but as a young person, I'm like, mm, I'm not there yet. Yeah. 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 Not for me. So um, what is your experience with dating in the industry been like? It's rough. Yeah. It's rough. Um, so yeah, I'm I'm single. Um, I've been single for a few years now. And I find it difficult just because, um, and I don't even do, like, I'm not even in, you know, I don't even do porn or anything. But even with that, just being with uh, somebody who does OnlyFans, I feel like most guys are not comfortable with that. Um, you know, they're not comfortable being with somebody who's chatting with their fans and taking naked pictures. Um, and, you know, it makes me happy. So I don't really care what they think. But yeah, but it is difficult. It's yeah. hard to find a guy that's like secure enough with himself to be like, OK, because um, I I don't know if you ever feel like this, but I think a lo- it seems like a lot of men want to date the Instagram model mm-hmm. and they want that playmate. Mm-hmm. Um, but the minute they get her, they're like, I don't know how to handle her. They want her to stop like modeling and doing everything. Mm hmm. Yeah, I hear that story all the time. They just want you to stop. And it's like, well, no, this is how I was when you met me. Like, why would I stop? Yeah. So. Yeah, I know. I think it's it's hard. There's a lot of insecurity there, you know, thinking that you're going to leave them for, like, one of the guys on OnlyFans, which is not impossible, but, like, unlikely, you know what I mean? Or just that, like, you're Like, if you're doing girl and guy, like, girl on girl, or what is it, girl guy content? Yeah. That I, I could get it like, yeah. a yeah. little bit. But yeah. I mean, even still, it's like if you meet a girl that's in that industry. You know what she does. You know what she's doing. Yeah. yeah. So fucking be a man. I don't know. Yeah. Let her do her thing. <laughs> what is your what is your ideal guy? My ideal guy, Mr. Perfect, would be tall, dark, and handsome. Mm-hmm. Probably 40 to 50. 40s to early 50s oh really so you like the older men I like daddy vibes (laughs) I just I like guys who are older because um I just feel like if they're my age I I will walk all over them they're Mm -hmm. not mature enough they don't know Mm -hmm. how to handle me older men have more experience they they just I feel like they know how to handle me better Mm -hmm. and they're you know they're with them being more experienced uh you know I, I would like a man who's more intelligent somebody who I can be inspired to be like uh, somebody I can learn from um you know that would be my Mr. Perfect somebody who can make me laugh mad chemistry with um the perfect penis about six and a half inches (laughs) don't forget that (laughs) don't forget that very important sex is like 70 percent for me (laughs) um yeah that would be like my ideal guy yeah Mm -hmm. I used to like older men and now they're just my age (laughs) <laughs> so so now are you like in, now do you like like men that are your age or do you like them older now or I mean so I'm married and I've been with oh, my okay. husband for seven years okay. it's actually funny because he's younger than me oh cougar is, he's like two and a half years younger than me it's like okay. doesn't count at this point so um I have to like I have to admit like I haven't like looked at another guy and yeah I mean look like, like well, that's obviously you're, you're in love you know? yeah you like I find other men attractive and right. stuff like that um for sure but you know like I'm not really like looking to sleep with anybody are else. you guys open or have you ever been open or no we're monogamous okay yeah. yeah yeah see that's how I would be if I I've been in um an open relationships before and they're fun but I just feel like when it comes to like really being serious with somebody mm-hmm. it's not like realistic for yeah. me at least yeah it's like it's interesting right because it, it's different for everyone and, and it's yeah. funny because my parents were swingers ah, you know okay. and they were yeah. together for like 50 years before my dad passed away oh wow and um you swingers know swingers are some of the happiest couples yeah. I have ever met though yeah. I must say they are they seem very happy most of the ones that I've met yeah well I think that there's a lot like first of all everyone's needs are generally being met right mm-hmm. Um, and there's a communication that you kind of have to have in order to have that sort of lifestyle. If you're going to sleep with other people, you need to talk to your significant other about that. Right. And I think the problem is, is that a lot of times in monogamous relationships is that you just, I don't know, you don't talk about sex. You don't talk about your needs because it's kind of like this assumption, okay, we're together forever and this is how it's going to be. And we're just going to only have sex with each other. And Mm -hmm. we're going to, you know what I mean? Like Mm -hmm. there's feel... 
like there's no need to communicate like there feels like there isn't yeah. and nobody talks about whether or not their needs are being like, I'm fine. met and it feels like <laughs> awkward and and that kind of thing whereas swingers well first of all just the lifestyle itself is like more open yeah you'd be like... a more open-minded person mm -hmm. so that like lends itself to better communication and all of that so maybe that's what i should do maybe i should just be a swinger <laughs> you know i mean i think it's like it's I've all about to... the right person, right? And mm -hmm. what and what works for you. Yeah. I've just um, you know, and and I've had like so many couples on who are swingers and it I always really admire people who can have an open relationship like that and it makes so much sense to me when they talk about it, but for me like I'm in a monogamous relationship. Monogamous. I'm in a monogamous relationship and it just like it just works for us. Yeah. Um also like I think I'm older too, so I'm not like as crazy as I was like in my 20s, you yeah. know, and like we kid and, mm -hmm. you know, so it's just kind of, I don't know. I mean, I love it. I like, I think at the end of the day, I would like to be in a monogamous relationship, mm -hmm. but I just haven't met the right one. Yeah. You know, so. Yeah. Yeah. Do you want to have a family? I do not want kids. Mm -hmm. um, I have a sister though, and I think she wants kids soon. So I'm rooting for her. I'm like, yes, I want to be the cool aunt. Yeah. But no, I, I don't want children. Yeah. Um, yeah, I just, I never have. So, yeah. Well, I mean, it's important to know what mm -hmm. you want. I have a lot of friends who don't want kids. You have kids? I have one, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. She's three. Oh, so. she's still a baby. Yeah, she's still a baby. Yeah. We started, we started late. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I went through a stage where I wasn't really entirely sure if I did. Yeah. But that was actually because I was with the wrong person. And I only stayed with him because I thought that he was my last chance at having kids. Oh, so once wow. I let go of that whole... I have to have kids, pressure, society, family, uh -huh. and all of that. Um, then I felt free to actually leave him, which was like a huge blessing. And then mm -hmm. when I met my husband, then I was like, oh. And it just happened. You're maybe like, oh. I could like, maybe we could have kids. But actually we didn't, like we talked about it, but mm -hmm. we didn't really, um, he's, he's really kind too. I mean, when, I was older when we met, I was like, 38 I think mm -hmm. so you know he knew that and he was younger than me like I mentioned and I think he knew yeah. that if he was like I really want kids I would feel pressured to have a, to a have child like immediately yeah. and also like you know when you get older it's harder to have one right exactly. so I there was a part of me that was scared I wouldn't be able to have a kid and I think he felt that so he was never like he was like, yeah, it'd be nice. But he was never like, I really want children. He was children. like, oh, if it happens, exactly. Great. If not, I love you either way. Exactly. Yeah. But I could tell like he did, yeah. you know, like he loved to spend time with his nephews and stuff. Mm -hmm. So when I got pregnant, um, I was like really happy and, and he's oh, a wonderful amazing. father. And yeah. like, I love, I absolutely love, I mean, my, my, my kid is like everything. She's just yeah. the best, but she is, it's a lot of work. It's so mm -hmm. much responsibility. And, you know, it's impossible to understand what that's like until you're in it. Because you hear everybody say it, right? Oh, yeah. Like, oh, kids are a lot of work. But it's like until you have one, you're like, you don't really get it. So I applaud people like you who, like, <laughs> know what you want. And you're like, I don't want kids. Like, I, I want to live my life this way. And you don't mm -hmm. cave to that societal pressure of, like, you're a woman and you have to have children. Because I yeah. felt that hard when oh, I was, really? like, yeah, when I was in that place where, like, I was like, maybe I don't want kids. Like, uh -huh. I felt very pressured about it. Yeah, it's kind of weird too. I I, I feel like um, people are like, when they're they're like, what do you mean you don't want kids? Like, they exactly. look, they're like, look at you, like, what's wrong with you? Or yeah. like, isn't that their your sole purpose in life is to right. have children? And I'm yeah. like, I'm like, there's so much more to life than like, granted, it would be beautiful to have a family, and I'm sure changing your your when you have a kid, it changes your whole perspective on life. I'm sure like it's a great experience but it, it's not for everyone that's the thing and like, not and everybody a lot has, more to life too than yeah. just that not everybody has to have the same life experience yeah like like me personally i just want to travel i'm like i always joke around i'm like i want to travel fuck and make money yeah <laughs> like you know i am terrified of the responsibilities of what it, it what comes with having a child like that terrifies me and i'm like i don't know if i could handle that i I would want to be obviously be the best mother that I could, but I just, you know, it, it scares me to be responsible for another life. Mm -hmm. That terrifies me. And I'm like, Ooh. but isn't it also <laughs> like infuriating that you probably feel like you have to explain why you don't want kids, right? As a woman. A little bit. Right? Yeah. Because like yeah. if a man says, I don't want kids, I think they're most like, people oh, are like, that's oh, fine. Okay. Yeah. But as a woman, Mm -hmm. It's like if you don't want kids, then you have to be able like, to explain why. And it's like you shouldn't have to explain why. Like yeah. you just don't fucking like, want I kids. I just don't want – never wanted them. Yeah. 
you know, I'm, I'm getting older too. I'm like, I've, I've, I've never changed that. Yeah. It's just, I don't know, maybe one day it might just switch and I'll be like, hey, Holly, I'm having a baby. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to come back on your show nice and pregnant. <laughs> I mean, I hear yeah. that, that that pregnancy yeah. stuff on OnlyFans does well. Oh, God. <laughs> is it? Does it? Is that a thing? Yes. Wow. See, the, everything's a thing. You know yeah. that. Everything's yeah. a thing. Wow. Yeah. I know there's Good there's know. there's still guys who come on and they're like, do you still have pictures of yourself when you were pregnant? Oh, wow. So, yeah, I know. It's, it's, it's definitely <laughs> it's a thing. Wild for wild sure. Thing. Well, Corey, thank you so much for coming on. Thank you for having me, Holly. It was amazing to see you. And, and yeah. yeah, this is like literally the best podcast I've ever been on. It's just because you're so easy to talk to. Thank and, you. And yeah, this was great. Well, you were only on one other podcast before, right? And it's... I've been on a few, actually. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> it's like they were all few. terrible. <laughs> terrible. <laughs> well, there thank you, you so thank much. Thank you. Um, and... If you don't mind sticking around, I have a couple questions for you from my Patreon members. Okay, let's go. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, thank you so much for tuning in. Um, and actually, Corey, will you tell everybody where they can find you online? Yes, guys. So you can find me on Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, Facebook, OnlyFans. Um, my handle is at Corey Yee. And yeah, that's where you can find me. So check it out. Fantastic. <laughs> and then you guys can find me, of course, at Holly Randall on Instagram and on Twitter. Um, join my Patreon for access to this live stream and so many other perks. That's patreon.com slash Holly Randall Unfiltered. Thank you guys so much for joining us, and I will see you next week.